Um, I'm going to give the presentation. And then if you have any questions, ask them in the chat box. And uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, I'll open up the floor and answer those questions for you. So again, thank you for taking time, spending your evening uh, with me so I can discuss, um, see my, uh, my, uh, my, um, my marketing manager was very diplomatic in why you may want to buy your kids a condo. Uh, I'm more aggressive in, in where I say you need to buy your kids a condo. Um, but I think at the end of this, you'll really understand where my passion comes from on how you can really uh, help your next generation, your children, uh, to really get ahead. Um, so we'll get into it. Uh, so my name is Alex uh, Wilson. I'm owner and broker record of Remax Wealth Builders Real Estate. I've been selling real estate in Toronto for 15 years. Uh, we also have a significant presence in Calgary as well. We've been doing Calgary since 2019. Excuse me. I'm the number one Remax agent in Canada for individual transactions in 2022, number 11 agent worldwide. Uh, I've been inducted in the Remax Hall of Fame, awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award at 35. I've been awarded the Remax Circle of Legend Award. Uh, I put this in perspective, I'm 41 currently. Um, but beyond all of this, I've had a successful investing career. I've been investing in real estate since 2012. And that first condo, I turned that $39,300 deposit into a $17 million real estate portfolio, including 15 condos, a high park triplex, an apartment building in Hamilton. And that number is actually incorrect. So I just added another uh, piece of real estate to that portfolio. Uh, we just bought uh, a building to, to house uh, our uh, operations in. So that'll be added to the portfolio as well. But there's a reason I discuss this is that I talk and everything I talk about comes from um, a point of thinking of this as an investment and how it's going to help uh, your kids move forward. And the next slide is actually show my whole portfolio. So this is the whole portfolio, less a building I was just discussing. Um, and what's really powerful when you look at this is how when you combine a finite asset, like real estate, what I mean, a finite, uh, there's only um, only so much land. So you can only have so many homes on that land. Uh, and time, you only have so much time, you can build tremendous value. And this is when we look at applying time to your children, um, who your children have, you know, knock on wood, more time on this world than you do, uh, you can really help them get ahead by making this investment now. And it's just simple math. And I'm going to show you this math, but I started this doing this in 2012. So just over to 11 years now. Um, and so I would have been 11 years. So I would have been uh, 30 when I was starting this. Uh, and if you look at the valuations, it's, you can see the significant wealth that has been grown by investing in real estate, starting with that one condo and growing it to, to what it is today. And that portfolio value is worth over $17 million. Now, there's mortgages on these properties. There isn't $17 million in my bank. Um, I'm paying mortgages on all these properties. Um, but in 30 years, all these properties will be paid off. And uh, that's because the amortization period is 30 years. Um, these properties will be all paid off by 30 years. And there are tenants in these properties paying down these mortgages for me so that in 30 years, this portfolio would be worth $42 million. And that's just um, using a, a very conservative compounded annual growth rate of 3%. Um, and then I go from today of, of having mortgages in all these properties and the, the portfolio worth $17 million to having no mortgages in any of the properties and the portfolio being worth $42 million in 30 years. And when you think of things like this and you put really put that longer time horizon and owning the real estate, a lot of you on here have seen this most likely because if you have kids that are um, at the age where you may be looking at getting them a condo or making an investment in property. See, here's my, here's my oldest one right here. She's five. Do you want to say hi to everyone? Um, you, you, when you when you when you look at that, you probably bought real estate, and you may have owned your home for a while. You may have your original home that you had your children in and raised your children in, and there were that house is worth significantly more today than it was previously. When you're able to start your child off early, that same effect happens. And if you start them off early, you're just setting them up for success earlier. So you're taking advantage of that 
finite resource that they have so much of at a young age is time. Um, and I want to show this in bite-sized chunks and the impact of what real estate can do for you. So again, this is getting you in the investment mindset um, in real estate and showing you how owning real estate over time can, again, build significant wealth, but also help you um, build your financial fu future and secure your financial future. So if we just look at a real estate portfolio that's worth $1 million, and my background's in economics, I know I have some, uh, some economists on this, this webinar as well, um, with a portfolio at a, at a million dollars, that portfolio is value in 30 years will be uh, $2.4 million. And that's again, at the compound annual growth rate of 30%. If I adjust that for inflation, inflation today's purchasing power, that's worth 1.4 million. And if I apply a, a conservative rate of return of 5%, um, again, that's with today's purchasing power. So that $70,000 would be the equivalent of what, what you could buy in today's goods. Um, that'd be worth $70,000 in the future. You could pay yourself out that and that property would be paid off in 30 years. And then if you had a $2 million portfolio, a $3 million portfolio. So you can really see that compounding effect as you grow your portfolio and make it larger and larger. And by starting your kids off early, you can really help them do this. So number one, reason one, if you had a chance to watch my little three minute video on my five reasons, I'm um, diving into these five reasons more, but number one, you will live to probably a hundred plus. That's a reality. Great news for everyone here. You're probably going to make it to, to 100 plus years old. That's great. But how old are you, your kids then? Well, your kids, if you're making to 100, uh, your kids will probably be uh, 60, 70 years old. And that inheritance money that uh, may be going to them, well, they don't need it at 60, 70 years old. They're, they're already established themselves. Why would they need it? then you know that's just padding things for them like they they don't need it then why not help them now when they can actually use it when you can use that value of time that i was just showing you how i've used it and what i've grown over the last 10 years using that value of time you know to get them in that real estate asset now and take advantage of compounded growth um, and leverage of the asset so you give it to you give it to them, use it when they're in their 20s versus use it on use it for them when they're in their 60s and 70s. Um, plus, you're not worried about you'll be saving on any uh, potential uh, tax consequences by gifting it to them now as opposed to um, doing that again uh, with your estate later on. So there, there is a savings with that. So why not help them now when you can? as opposed to, uh, and they, they could use it versus, you know, later on in life when they won't really need it. Um, number two, um, and this is where we get into to real detail, um, the math just works. And uh, here uh, I, I used a two bedroom uh, example uh, on, on this. Um, just one second, I have to call my wife. Okay, so I use an example, and I use actually an example in a building that I uh, own a, an investment unit in. So that building that you saw that I purchased a unit in um, 2012, uh, when, when, uh, the, the building I purchased a building in, my very first uh, investment unit in 2012 um, was in 20 Minowin Mike and uh, lane and i bought that unit uh first investment condo that was at 39,300 um just one second just going to pause this guys we're just having an extraction now good night sloan we'll see you later okay so so now you can get back to my focus so sorry about that guys uh She's five, so I have a little bit of time before I have to put a condo in her name. Um, so 20 Minowin Mike and Lane, uh, unit 428, using this example, is the building that I bought my first investment condo in. Uh, this is a two-bedroom unit, and specifically, I like two bedrooms, and you're going to see why 
when I go into the example and why I'm focusing on two bedrooms and why it makes the most financial sense. This two bedroom unit will cost you $750,000 today. Um, and when we go into the math, if we bought that today for $750,000, if we're, we'd be looking at a five-year fixed rate of 5.29%, um, amortization period 30 years, because you're gonna put 20% down. So this is where you're helping your child with $150,000 down payment. Um, that's That'll give you your 80% your loan to value. Um, the I look at a growth rate of 5% in the valuation that's going to come into play later, uh, looking at the annual property tax and the maintenance fee. So we get an idea of what our costs are on the property. Um, so how does the math work out? Well, the monthly cost on that, that's going to be just over $4,000 a month. That's for your, mor your mortgage payment, your maintenance fee, and your uh, property tax. Um, but here's the thing. Why did I focus on a two bedroom? Well, you're gonna rent that two bedroom out. So you could rent that second bedroom out for $1,500 a month. Um, and parking, there's a parking spot with this unit, you can rent that parking for $200 a month. So now that 4,030, your actual monthly cost on that property is just over $2,300 a month. Now, but of that 2,300, every month you're paying down principal on that mortgage. And in this case, you're paying down just under $700 a month. So my net monthly expense on this property is $1,630 per month by renting out that second bedroom of the property. And what your, your son or daughter is going to rent that second bedroom out to a friend. So what are you what you're doing in this case? You're showing them business sense. You're showing them how to run a business. And the business is the property they're living in and then renting out that second bedroom to a friend. And what, in essence, you're doing is that friend is helping cover the costs on that property you know, versus renting a property in this building. So if I rented a one-bedroom unit in this building, it would be $2,600 a month. If I rented a two-bedroom unit in this building, it would be $3,200 a month. And again, this building completed in 2016. Uh, so that makes it uh, seven years old now. So it's not even a brand new building, but these are the rents that you're looking at in uh, Toronto. And again, these scenarios I'm giving, I'm giving specifically a Toronto scenario, but it applies if whether I'm in Vancouver, because I know we have some people from Vancouver here today. Calgary. It applies in Calgary. It applies in any community. So you may be thrown off a little bit by the numbers, but the, prince, the same principles apply. We're just using different numbers, but the same, uh, it'll have the same um, same output at the end of the day. Uh, and in some markets, it, it's even better than the Toronto market. So if we look at, if we're just renting a 20, uh, a um, a one bedroom unit for our child uh, at $2,600 a month, um, versus the 1630 in ownership expenses, there's a net benefit every month by owning this condo of $962 per month. Um, and if you're like, well, what if they, he rented a unit or she rented a unit with a friend? Well, that's $3,200 a month. So it's $1,600 a month. So now we're closer. So now the, the shared rent versus the ownership expense, they're nearly equal on that. But, but, that brings me to point three, equity pay down and appreciation. So we talked, to, I showed you a little bit of equity pay down because I looked at the net uh, ownership expense when I factored in equity pay down, but what about the appreciation on the property? And this, these slides that are coming up are absolutely mind blowing when you see, when you see the numbers. So let's look at this, val the value of this property over the next 10 years. And I look at an annual growth rate of 5% on these. So our current market value in 2023, we're looking at $750,000. We put that 20% down on the property. So the mortgage balance is $600,000. Um, and then looking at with equity pay down, uh, when we look at the mortgage balance, balance every year, which is going down, and then the appreciation of 5% compound annually. Let's look at, at year 10. So by year 10, the property value is is going to be 1.22 million. My mortgage balance is one, one from 600,000 down to 40, 492,000. The net equity after the sale of that property is $729,000. So by owning this property, by, by you putting $150,000 down on the property, 
and your son or daughter managing the property, they're going to have net equity at the end of this of $729,000. What have we done here? We've used the value of time again. Let's assume they're 21 years old when they did, when they did this, just got out of university. 31 years old, it's 10 years later. You've just given them $729,000. And I'm going to show you what you're going to do at $729,000 next. It is so, so important that you do this early um, because it just sets them up for the next expense, uh, sorry, the, the next step in all of this. So that that equity, that that is $720,000 tax-free because it's their principal residence over 10 years. If they're trying to save this, if they're trying to save this, I'd ha they'd have to save nearly $73,000 after tax per year. $73,000 starting at 21. $73,000 after tax per year. You think they're going to be able to do that on their own? Absolutely not. There's not a chance they could do that. Not a chance. So there's a good chance at the end of 10 years, they're starting out with nothing. But by doing this, by setting them up at 21, you've taken the value, the real estate and the time and allowed them without even thinking about it to have savings of nearly $730,000. Again, there is not a chance they would able to, able to do that in 10 years on their own, just trying to save money in the bank and making their own investments. It is not, it's not happening. By providing them that $150,000, which is, which is safe, it, they can't blow it. It's in, the, it's in the asset. It's in the real estate in the asset. At the end of the day, they're the asset. It will always be owned. It will always be there. That is protected. And then there's a four savings with equity pay down and you get to participate in the market with the value of uh, those values going up. And then again, if I, if I, again, if I go back to these values here and you're like, Alex, the, these increases look crazy. Okay, well, let, let me tell you that my one bedroom condo that I bought in this building, so I own in this building, that original purchase price on that unit was around $260,000. And today that unit is worth $600,000. And that was over a 10 year period because I bought that nearly 10, uh, in 2012 and now we're into 20, 2013. So again, similar similar numbers that we're looking, looking at here. It's all real and it will happen. So $729,000 tax free. So at 31, what are we going to do with that? Well, in that three minute video that I sent you earlier, I said, equity pay down and appreciation. What you're doing is you're funding the future purchase of that house for your grandkids to live in. And let me, and if you don't do that, they will not be able to buy that house. It's not going to happen. And I wanted to show you the example right here. So the average detached home in Toronto right now, $1.9 million. That's what the average detached home in Toronto is. So again, let's provide let's put a 5% compound interest rate, interest rate on that. What's that value going to be in 10 years? Well, that will be 3.1, just over 3.1 million dollars at the end of this. Do you know how much money you need to buy a 3.1 million? The minimum minimum down payment requirement is 20%. So that's $623,000 plus there's going to be land transfer tax on that. That's going to be another $128,000. So the minimal capital requirement to buy a T-Dash home in 10 years in Toronto, $752,000. Isn't that number very close to the $729,000 you're going to get tax-free over, over 10 years? It is. So by making that $150,000 investment today in a $750,000 condo, you are providing the down payment for that future house that your children are going to raise their families in. The earlier you set up your children to do this, the better off they will be because real estate goes up over time and you're taking the, you're taking the advantage of leverage and equity pay down over that time. And then again, why I like the two bedroom model because 
then you can have a roommate in there, a friend, and do this. And guess what? As I mentioned, I'm 41 right now. I've done this. I did this. This is this is what I did. My first condo that I bought was a two bedroom condo. I bought that and I rented out the second bedroom and I offset my costs. And then I went to if if you if you now now, now I'm going to go in a little bit of a rabbit hole. But if you want to if you want to follow the Alex Wilson route of success, um, I did the condo, and then what I bought at my net my next house. Um, I didn't start this at 21. Um, um, but at 35, when, when we bought the next, when we bought our next property, we actually bought then a triplex. So we bought the triplex and then we lived in the basement of the triplex and rented out the second and third floor. And then we had all our kids in the triplex, um, and made our way through the triplex. We lived in the basement. Then we had, um, little Sloney who you saw, uh, moved to the, the, we moved to the second floor. And then we had, our second jack on the second floor. And then we moved to the third floor and added, added, sorry, we moved, the, we went to the basement. Um, then Laura was pregnant with Sloney. Then we moved to the second floor. So we had Sloney on the second floor and then we had our second child, Jack on the second floor. Sorry, not second floor, main floor. Kim was thinking second floor, main floor. We did on the main floor. And then there's a little Jimmy that came along. So we, we moved to the second floor at that point. So, so the third unit, and then we finished uh, a third floor. So we lived on the second and third floor uh, with our family. And I got a great five minute video. So if, would you, when I when I send the recap, but also if you got the invite to this, you see a video down at the, the bottom of the email that say how I bought uh, two de detached homes uh, in Toronto for I think 39,300. I can't remember the exact title of it is. I actually go through the whole thing and the math of how I did the whole thing. I'm just showing you that I've done it. I've lived it all you can do this. And I, and that whole, you, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, you saw the, the real estate portfolio. You can do all these things and you can set your, your children up for success, significant success by starting this whole program early. And as I said, it teaches them business sense because they're, they're going to be managing the asset. Um, they got to rent, they got to rent out that, that second bedroom to help offset the costs, but also your asset is safe. Your, your investment of 150000 in this case is safe because you there's a piece of real estate you own with it. You, that, that money can't be squandered away. You, the, the asset is always there. So it, it is perfectly safe. Um, and then again, as I, as I showed here, this is how you're going to fund. This is going to how you help out your kids today with only $150,000. When you rather help your kids out today with $150,000 down payment versus a $752,000 down payment, when they're in the 30s and they're having your grandchildren, it's much easier if you start today. Um, and then you let the value, the time and the market um, provide the down payment for that future house. And again, I've done it. I've lived it. Um, and yeah, there, there's my comment right there. Uh, it's my first time doing this presentation, so I'm not a, I, I don't have the, the slides mesmerized yet. Down payment now versus down payment for a detached home in 10 years make the $150,000 down payment now? Or do you want to assist with a, a down payment to buy a detached home in 10 years for $752,000? Much more affordable to do $150,000 now. It's a much smarter uh, business move. Now, now those are the, that was the monetary side. But let's talk about the non-monetary side. And um, uh, I've, I was actually having a conversation of, with my uncle one day and and we, we came up with these and because he has... Uh, young daughters that are entering the prime age so do i do they rent or, or do they buy um one number reason four is your children's landlord problems are going to become your problems and what do i mean by that you know as i said in my video most of these condos that are owned in the city of toronto are owned by mom and pop investors i own a property management company we do hundreds well we do over 100 100 rentals a year and we've done hundreds on hundreds and hundreds on hundreds and hundreds uh, close to a thousand rentals over my career. Um, so I know what landlords try to get away with and what they want to do. And I tell them, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Um, and, or, or maybe they just don't want to deal with issues in the property. Well, guess what? Those, those landlord problems will become your problems. If your child is having a problem with the landlord, who are they going to complain to? They're going to complain to you and they're going to ask for your help. 
and they're going to bug you and they're going to bug you and they're going to bug you and then you have to intervene and do you really want to be dealing with those landlord issues uh, someone else that you don't know and and that's they're a busy professional they don't even have time to deal with this real estate property no and now you now you now you you're writing angry emails or calling that person or trying to protect your child. Do you really want to deal with that? No. So you, there's an opportunity cost to your time savings by you don't want to have to deal with another landlord. You can just own the asset yourself. Therefore, you have control. And the reason five, safety. Uh, as I said, mo the majority of these condos are owned by mom and pop investors. They may own one or two units. Um, and they have a key to their unit to your your children's unit and i can the majority of them are not educated in the landlord or tenant act and uh, for specifically for ontario or again it'd be the same thing in bc or, or or in alberta um these people have keys to their unit and they can access the unit at any time you know, do you really want someone you don't know having access to your child's living quarters and that isn't educating what they can and can't do um, and has ideas of, hey, you're, 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 I don't want you doing this in my condo and they're, they're just going to access that real estate asset at any time. Again, I know this because I, I, I know what these mom and pop investors want to do and I've got to tell them, no, you can't do that. So like, do you want to have to deal with potential safety issues with, um, with landlords? And then scenario two, um, what if the landlord installs spy cams in the unit and takes video of your kids and posts them on the internet? And uh, just Google that. Google landlord spy cam Toronto condo and click news. And this was the most high profile case. I remember when this hit the news, uh, actor guilty of mischief for hiding cameras in rental condo. Um, but there's more than one case of this. Uh, and those are the reported cases. What about the unreported cases? Uh, so again, are these, uh, and as I said in my three minute video, are these actually going to happen? Well, most likely not, um, but they could happen. They have happened. So if you have the means, why even go down this route? And, and it's not about making your kid, well, my kid has to understand what the real world's like. No, just that, that's, that has nothing to do with it at all. If you, it, Give you can show them how the real world is like. Give them business sense. Show them how to manage the rental asset. Give them the second room to manage, and they can rent that out, that unit out to friend. Let's show them how to run a business, not deal with sketchy landlords. You know, let, why why have to deal with that aggravation? You know, they they could be focused on other things that are actually building them um, as individuals and showing them how to to build wealth. That's what we should be teaching them, not how to deal with. Um, things that 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 are just irrelevant and that are going to be irrelevant to you like why do we want to do with those things so when you if you have the means why not just protect your children and protect yourself and 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 just go right into an investment asset because again that asset will set your set your kids up on a financial pathway that will allow them to buy that next property because nothing drives me more and that's when some when people go I'm like i don't know how my kid's going to buy buy a property in in Toronto, I don't know how they're ever going to afford a house. I just showed you how you can afford how they can afford a house. You know, they're they're going to you 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 start as soon as you can by buying the condo, and the condo is going to fund that purchase of their house. That's the reality. And that's how you how you're going to to fund that. Um, so that's a that's essentially everything there. And I wanted to open up the floor to questions. I know some people have their hands raised. Um, what you can do is ask those questions in the chat box down below.